Hello, my name is Alvaro Martin and I'm going to be presenting music generation with language models. So let's just start with the general architecture that I will be following throughout the presentation. So it's composed mainly of three different parts. So a multimodality binding model generates uh, the same embedding for different modalities and it can be used to condition the, the language model in the music generation process. So for example, we can say, okay, generate a piano playing a happy song, or we can provide an image of a piano, or we can provide an audio of a piano. And the language model should understand that that's what we want to generate. Then we have the vector quantized variational autoencoder. So the encoder can be used at inference time to condition the generation too, by providing some input music that we want to continue with a generation. At inference time, the, the vector quantized variational autoencoder decoder can be used to, given the discrete codes generated by the language model, uh, we will generate the final waveform that we will listen into, the final music that we will listen. <laughs> And the language model, which is the third component, is the core of the whole system. And it's the one that provided, provided these input embeddings. It would generate the music that we actually want to listen to. So now let's go into some more detail into each of these components, starting with the vector quantized variational autoencoder. So the main idea of the vector quantized variational autoencoder is that given an audio representation, so a spectrogram or a waveform, we encode it and quantize it into some discrete tokens, into a sequence of discrete tokens. So in this case, this waveform would be represented by the tokens 5, 1, 23, and 17. So this means that if we go to the codebook that we have and we take the fifth token, the first token, the 23rd token, the 17th token, we can use those embeddings in the codebook to give them to the decoder and the decoder will generate back the original waveform that we have encoded here. So this is the main idea. And the purpose of this model is to generate some discrete codes that we can predict with our, la with our language model. Once our language model generates new tokens, we can fit those tokens to the decoder and the decoder will generate the music that we want to listen to. Okay, so there are different implementations available of this vector quantized variation out encoder. And I've chosen for this project a very concrete one that is the encoded model provided by MetaAI which has these th three components that we've seen, the encoder, the quantizer, and the decoder, but it has some particularities on how it is trained. So this model has in the middle, instead of just one codebook or one uh, vector quantizer, it has several of them. And the idea is that this is a residual vector quantizer. So we are going to quantize the difference between the input and the quantized embedding to have a, a smaller quantization error. So we will see in the next slide uh, some more detail about this. So when we've generated the quantized embeddings, we can fit them to the decoder to have the reconstructed waveform. So this model is trained from waveform to waveform. So given the codes, we have directly a waveform uh, at the output. If we had a spectrogram, we, need, we would need to use a vocoder like Melgan, Hyphigan, or Bigvigan to generate the final waveform. But this is not the case with encodec. And this model is trained to reconstruct the original waveform. So we are comparing the waveforms with an L1 loss. Uh, we are also comparing the original and the output of the generated spectrograms with L1 and L2 losses. And we also have discriminator losses so that the model is generating waveforms that are as indistinguishable as possible from the original real waveforms. Finally, we also have a, the commitment loss from the codebooks, which the higher the difference between the continuous and the quantized uh, embeddings, the higher the commitment loss is. So this forces to have embeddings in the codebooks that are close to, to the continuous embeddings that, that we are quantizing and reduce the quantization error. Okay, so how does the residual vector quantizing work uh, more in detail? So given the output of the encoder, we quantize it with a first layer and we compute the residual, which is the difference between the input and the quantized result. So this residual is again quantized by the second layer and we get another residual and so on and so forth until we have passed everything through the eight uh, codebooks that we are using in this particular case that we are seeing in this image extracted from Valley paper. So we have eight different discrete tokens per time step. Uh, so how do we fit that to the decoder to generate the waveform? Well, we sum the different embeddings of the different codebooks and the resulting sum is, is fed to the decoder to generate the waveform. So what we have here is that for each time step, we have eight codes, eight discrete codes, but our language model predicts them one by one because it's such a regressive the way have, uh, we've implemented it. We could predict the eight of them uh, altogether. That's another approach. But in this project, I'm predicting them one by one. So the way that I'm doing this is interleaving them. So 
first predict the first stage in the first timestamp, the first stage, then the second stage of the first timestamp, and we do that until the stage eight uh, of the first timestamp. And then we go back to stage one of the second timestamp, stage two, and so on and so forth. In a particular case, due to the configuration in terms of bitrate of the encodec that I will be using, there are only four codebooks, uh, not eight. So I will be predicting four codebooks per timestamp, four discrete codes per timestamp. Okay, so now let's move on to the multimodality binding model. So these models can be used to condition the generation of the model. And one approach is to use uh, CLAP, uh, which is, it has learned to pair uh, audios and texts. So the model is trained to uh, have a short uh, similar embeddings for audios and pairs or captions that correspond to each other. So for example, an audio of a piano and a text saying, this is a piano. Uh, and it has also learned to separate text, uh, embeddings of text and audios that are, uh, that not correspond to each other. So for example, uh, an audio of a piano and a text saying, this is a violin. So this is how this model is trained. And at training time, we can just use music to train and use the audio encoder to generate the conditioning embedding. And at the inference time, we could write a text uh, with the music characteristics that we want and the embedding would be very similar to the ones that the language model has seen during training. So it would generate a similar music. Uh, but more recently, a new approach has appeared that it's image bind by Meta, which uses images as an anchor to link six modalities. So we link audio, text, depth, heat map, and IM IMU um, all together with images. The way to do this is they train uh, encoders that lend a joint space between images and each one of these other five modalities. So we learn a joint space for images and audio, images and text, images and depth, heat map and IMU and images. And uh, we're using the same image encoder for all of them. So what they've seen is that um, when we uh, learn, for example, a joint space between text and images, so the text uh, and image embeddings of corresponding positive pairs are uh, they generate the same embedding then if we use text and audio those spaces are also uh, interrelated thanks to these um, images so if we have for example an audio of a bird and a text saying this is a bird they would generate very similar embeddings because they both correspond to images of birds and the model has been trained to generate very similar embeddings for that so using a model such as image bind we could we could train just with audios of music and at inference time, we could provide a text describing the music that we want. Or for example, an image of a piano, if we want to generate a piano or, or a violin, if we want to generate a violin. So it has a wider variety of possibilities than just using CLAP. So now let's move on to the core of the project, which is the language model. So the language model in this particular case of this project is a, transcoder, a transformer decoder only uh, model. And give it some input sequence, it generates continuation tokens for that uh, input sequence. So in general, uh, a model like this could be fed like uh, input conditioning, which are the blue tokens, then a separator, a star token, and the model would start generating the green tokens. So we will have here at the output, the green tokens. So during training, we would train the model to predict the next token. So from the separator, we predict Y1, from Y1, Y2, and so on, and we can we can do this in a sim in a single forward pass thanks to using a masked uh, causal attention with causal masking. But at inference then, what we would do is provide the conditioning input sequence, which are the blue tokens, and then the separator to indicate that we want to start generating and that the blue sequences have uh, has ended. And the model would start generating y1, and then we would take y1 and we would place it also at the input, and we would generate y2. So we would do the generation autoregressively, which is much slower, but it's the way that is uh, usually done. In our particular case of our model, we don't have a uh, real conditioning sequence as uh, for the input, we just have one embedding. So it would be the separator, um, which is the um, multimodality binding model embedding. So for example, we could have here the clap embedding and the model would start generating music. Or uh, in case we are not interested in having uh, multiple types of music, just one type of music, we could have here just a start uh, token and the model would start generating that type of music. We will see that this is what uh, I've actually done and it works quite well. So now let's move on to the results. Um, so I've trained a proof of concept with just two songs, which are both uh, sad piano extracted from um, infraction, um, no copyright music from, from YouTube. And both songs are just piano songs, and it's a similar piano type. So it's, it's a sad piano, a slow piano. So 
in this particular case, clap is not needed because we don't want to condition the generation. It's just um, a piano song. So instead of using clap, I just provide a start token or a start embedding. And the model knows that given that token, it should start generating music, right? So as I'm only using two songs, the model is probably overfitting. So the generated music will be very similar to the training data. So I've chosen piano because it has very particular sounds, sounds and it makes the generation task uh, easier. So it's, it's easier than generating, for example, lo-fi or jazz, which has many instruments and many different sounds. The generation can be done unconditionally or conditionally. So unconditional generation is done where we just provide a start token and the model starts generating uh, the piano tokens by itself with no idea of what we want it to generate. But we can also do conditional generation where we provide a start token, but also some previous music tokens that we want the model to continue. So we will see an example of this, both generation types. And then the model has been trained with sequences of three seconds, but we will see that even it's only trained with three seconds, it can generate longer sequences just by generating new music based on the last three seconds of the generation. So the code is available on GitHub together with some samples. So here's an example of unconditional three seconds generation. Here we're just feeding the model the start token and the model will generate any piano that it wants. So let's listen to this sample. Okay, so we can see that the model uh, generates p sounds music that sounds like piano and it's coherent music, even though the model is not conditioned on anything. It's just conditioned on generating music. So we can actually generate different types of music just by sampling multiple times from the distribution that the model has learned. And by sampling this multiple times, we can see different sequences, different musical generations. So now let's hear what the model does when conditioned with three seconds of piano. So in this particular case, we are feeding the model three seconds of a piano song that's taken from the training music input. And we will let the model generate the next 10 seconds. So let's hear first the, the conditioning that we are providing the model. Okay, so that's the condition, which is a ground truth that's extracted from the training data. And now let's hear what the model generates to continue that song. Okay, so we can see that the model generates around three seconds more, similar to its context size of good quality piano music continuing with uh, coherency, the conditioning piano, then it generates some noise, but then it gets back and continues generating piano that sounds uh, musical and makes sense. So that's a good thing to note that the model can actually recover from generation from generating those low quality samples and, and starts generating good piano again. So in conclusion, we've seen a general architecture on how to generate music with language models. And we've seen the samples of a proof of concept actually implemented generating piano music. So I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and thank you very much.